for me, it's hard to watch that game again. I can't, I can't watch that part. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's tougher than watch game seven. It was tough to swallow. Remember this goal? Well, the time gets it back center. They score! Gretzky scores! The Felix Potvin. And the Los Angeles Kings defeat the Maple Leafs. They're still alive. And he talks about it in this episode. I was in that foot. The 1992-93 Toronto Maple Leafs entered the season with the same goal in mind that they had had since way back in 1967 to end the team's Stanley Cup drought. In fact, that 67 Cup winning team was the last to even make it to the finals. But the 1993 Leafs had all the tools to get this team back to the promised land. I was so lucky when, uh, you know, coming to Toronto as a young kid, we had we had an experienced team, you know, we had we had Dougie as a captain, but, but we had Wendell that that was outstanding, that would almost played on one foot and then keep going, keep going to war, keep leading the way, keep leading the charge. For Felix Potvin, the pressure was on. Even though he was a rookie, he took over the starting job during the regular season. So much so that the Leafs traded five-time Stanley Cup champion and future Hall of Famer Grant Fuhrer to the Buffalo Sabres in February. Pavan's safety net was gone. Well, at first you're kind of like happy because you get you get to play. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, Grant was. Uh, I was lucky to have played with him for for a few months before. I was his roommate, and and I learned an awful lot of, of how he was on practice, how he was in game, how he was approaching games. And uh, once he got traded, uh, you know, I didn't I didn't have to think about was I going to play, was I going to not play. Probably because I was young, I didn't get to uh, to get nervous or or uh, or to get scared, but I was just happy to be able to play. Now, to say that their march to the Campbell Conference Final was grueling would be an understatement. They needed seven games to get past both the Red Wings and the Blues, and found themselves with a 3-2 series lead over Wayne Gretzky and the LA Kings. They just seemed bigger and bigger every round we played. And then, of course, you played the best player in the world, probably the best player of all time. But but that's the same time we, we I've, I've approached that, that we had a job to do. And uh, you know what? I, 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 don't, I wouldn't say we were intimidated. But to book their ticket to that dream final against the Montreal Canadiens, they needed to win game six in L.A. And who would have thought, in a game filled with so many superstars, that the guy wearing the stripes would be the most popular person on the ice. The referee tonight is Kerry Fraser. Ron Finn and Kevin Collins will be on the line. Kerry Fraser seemed to have players in his face the entire game. First, the Kings scored a controversial goal in the first period, and the players were there to argue. Then, he didn't call a penalty on this Rob Blake breakaway, and again, players were there to argue. There were certain call that that were right that were wrong you know but uh, it's always a tough game a fast game to officiate but it seems like everybody was uh, had a chip on their shoulder and now the kings had built up a 4-2 lead after two periods but the leafs remained pretty calm well there was never any panic on our room probably because it was part of, of the way the team was made and uh, you know, we had Pat that was leading us behind the bench. You know, guys just went at it and just went about their business in the third and were able to, to make it back. Toronto would storm back, led by a hat trick from Wendell Clark. But thanks to a Glenn Anderson penalty near the end of regulation, the Kings had a power play in overtime when it happened. Gretzky moving toward the net now. The shot, that's blocked. And it hurt Gilmore. He stopped the shot, it hurt him, he fell. It was Wayne Gretzky's stick bob, I believe. And uh, Kerry Fraser's going to the linesman to ask him here. And wouldn't this be something if Wayne Gretzky was throwing out for a high stick? You know, for me, I'm just I'm just looking at the play and then, and then trying to stay focused. And then I see Dougie uh, get a stick up. When you see blood, you, you're thinking, OK, there's a, there's, you know, it'd be a penalty. But and especially the way we came back in the game, being down 4-2, Tie it up 4-4, and then, and then having a penalty at the end of regulation, and then, and then that that non-call was uh, was very hard. I think for the first time after that game, we knew we could come back in Game Seven, but but it was tough to swallow. Everybody that have watched the game, I mean, Kerry himself admitted that he missed it. So you know, I mean, 
it's it, for me it's hard to watch that game again i can't i can't watch that part i mean it's uh, i think it's tougher than watch game seven and uh but, but what can you say i mean you can't change the past now so a possible five minute major turns into the great one staying in the game. Zazzle takes the puck away from Robitaille. Robitaille gets it back center. They score! Gretzky scores! Well, Wayne Gretzky, the guy that's paid to come up with the big plays, came up with the big play as he took a nice goal mouth pass and put it behind Felix Putman, who had no choice whatsoever. And he had this ability to uh to get lost on the ice and then pop up at the right place at the right time and that what makes it the, the best player of all time. Ah, so it's just hard to see it again over and over and over again. That goal of course forced a game seven back in Toronto. A game in which Gretzky called the best he ever played in the NHL. At game seven the only goal I remember of Wayne is the one that he banged it from behind the net to uh, to Dave Ellett. If you ask me the two other ones, I, I don't I don't remember because I haven't watched the game. So, uh, uh, but but it's normal. It's it's painful. You go through so much to to achieve to go there. You get so close, and then all of a sudden it doesn't happen. Uh, it's hard. Now, even after all of these years, all you have to do is mention Wayne Gretzky's name to a diehard Leafs fan, and the non-call will inevitably come up. It's a wound that just doesn't seem to heal for the fans and for Potvin. Especially during the pandemic, I was watching that with my son, all those games with Detroit, St. Louis, and I still can't watch that game. Like game six, game seven. Uh, I told him, if you want to watch, watch by yourself. I'm not watching it. 